The organic chemistry section of the chemistry paper starts with question 1.1, which reads, which one of the following is the general formula for alkanes? And alkanes always have the general formula CnH2n plus 2, where alkenes have the general formula CnH2n, and alkynes have the general formula CnH2n minus 2, that is the alkenes and these are the alkynes. Question 1.2 reads, the empirical formula of hexanoic acid. And so we start by drawing the molecular formula for hexanoic acid, meth, eth, probe, but, pent, hex. And the anoic acid gets the group with a double bonded carbon and a hydroxyl group where they are obviously then hydrogens to complete the four bonds on each carbon. So what we can see here is that this formula has six carbons. It then has 12 hydrogens and two oxygens. And we'd be tempted to therefore say that option C is the correct answer, but we must remember that the question is asked for the empirical formula for hexanoic acid, where empirical formula is the simplest ratio of the atoms to each other. So although this is the molecular formula for hexanoic acid, the simplest ratio for hexanoic acid would be C3H6O, where we have simplified that bit by dividing the number of each atom by two. And so our correct option for 1.2 is option D, the empirical formula for hexanoic acid is C3H6O. Question 1.3, which one of the following is the correct structural formula for methyl ethanoate? And so we can see here that this is an ester, and an ester is made up of two groups where the first group, the methyl, is the part that is attached only to the single bond oxygen. So we are looking for a group where there is one carbon attached to the single bond oxygen, and ethanoate is the part that is attached to the single bond oxygen and double bond oxygen. So two carbons there which means that option C is then our correct option because here we can see that there is a single carbon attached to with a single bond to the oxygen and then two carbons attached by single bond to the oxygen and double bond to a, another oxygen. Question two reads, the letters A to E in the table below represent five organic compounds. Use the information in the table to answer the questions that follow. 2.1 for compound D, write down the homologous series to which it belongs. So compound D is pentan 2 ohn and that suffix anone tells us that this belongs to the ketone homologous series. So the answer to 2.1.1 is that the homologous series here is the ketones. Question 2.1.2 asks us to give the IUPAC name of a functional isomer and pentan 2 ohm is made up of pent, meaning five carbons, meth, eth, pro, but, pent, where there is a carbon double bonded to an oxygen and in this case it is the second carbon that is double bonded to an oxygen where the rest of the carbons then complete their four bonds with hydrogens. And so when we are asked for a functional isomer of a ketone, it is always going to be an aldehyde. And an aldehyde is going to contain the same number of carbons, meth, eth, propute, pent, where now that carbon oxygen double bond, the carbonyl group, is on the first carbon, because that is the difference between an aldehyde and a ketone, where an aldehyde contains the carbon oxygen double bond only on the first carbon, a ketone contains the carbon-oxygen double bond, not on the first carbon. We've been asked for the IUPAC name, and so to name this aldehyde, it is still pent because there are five carbons, but it is now an aldehyde and therefore gets the suffix anel, so pentanel. We don't need to indicate the position, it does not need to be pentan 1L because it is an aldehyde, therefore the double bond is only possible on the first carbon. 
Question 2.2 asks us to write down the IUPAC name of compound A. And so we start by looking at compound A and we can see that compound A contains only single bonds. So this is an alkane where our longest carbon chain would be meth, eth, prop, but, pent, hex. Our longest carbon chain is going to be hexane since there are no double or triple bonds. There is also no unique functional group here. What we can then also see is that off this six carbon chain, there are two methyl branches, two groups of one carbon attached to three hydrogens attached in different positions. And so we know that this is gonna get a prefix methyl, but there are two of them. So we say that it is dimethyl. And then there's also a bromo group that is attached to this compound. And so it is also going to get a prefix bromo. Now what's important is we need to identify the position of these branches, the methyl and the bromo groups. And so we need to number this so that the numbers are as small as possible. And what that would mean is that if we count from the left, the numbers that we will have, if this is carbon number one, the numbers are two, three, and five. Whereas if we were to count from the right, where this is our first carbon, the numbers would be two, four, and five. And so we can clearly see that by numbering from the left, the numbers are smaller and therefore that is the more correct way to number this. And then we would realize that bromo being alphabetically first B in bromo compared to the M in methyl, we ignore the prefix di. The B in bromo compared to the M meaning bromo group comes first and therefore the IUPAC name for this compound is going to be 5-bromo. And then there are two methyl groups. These are on the second and the third carbon. So 2,3-dimethyl hexane and that must be written as one word and so our final name then is 5 bromo 2 comma 3 dimethyl hexane important to remember that we must only show a hyphen between numbers and letters and a comma between numbers this is all one word and we must be very careful not to show any spaces in that word when naming this compound Question 2.2.2, we are asked for the structural formula for compound E. And so compound E we can see is 4-methyl pent 2 iron. So what we need to take note of here is pent, meaning that the longest carbon chain here is 5 carbons, meth, eth, prop, but, pent, where there is a triple bond identified by the Y and E, making it an alkyne that is on the second carbon. And so this is pent to iron, meaning that there's a triple carbon bond on the second carbon. So I've counted with carbon number one on the left. The second carbon contains a triple bond. And there is a methyl group, meaning a single branch containing a single carbon on the fourth carbon where we have once again counted where this is our first carbon and we complete that by ensuring that every carbon has formed four bonds and we add those hydrogens in we must be careful not to forget any of these hydrogens as marks would be deducted for that mistake so there is our structural formula of compound e four methyl pent to iron important here it does not matter if this carbon branch is drawn above or below the main chain. Question 2.3 asks, compound B is a primary alcohol. Write down the meaning of the term primary alcohol in the definition or the explanation given as per the guideline document is a primary alcohol is where the carbon atom bonded to the hydroxyl group is bonded to only one other carbon atom. Question 2.3 goes on, compound B reacts with another organic compound X to form compound C. 2.3.2, write down the type of reaction that takes place. 
So now compound B, as we have seen here, is an alcohol. We are told that it reacts with some compound X to form compound C, where we can see that compound C is an ester, which means that the type of reaction here is the reaction between an alcohol and a carboxylic acid that produces an ester, and that type of reaction is called an esterification reaction. 2.3.2 is esterification. We could also say that this is a type of condensation reaction. Question 2.3.3 asks us for the IUPAC name of compound X, and they are asking here what compound is required to add to this alcohol that we have here, this alcohol being compound B, in order to form this ester. And important here that we know that the chain that is attached only to the single bond oxygen is always the chain that comes from the alcohol, where the chain that is attached to the single and the double bond oxygen is always the chain that comes from our carboxylic acid. And so we can see that this is a carboxylic acid that contains one, two, three, four carbons, which means that this is going to be butanoic acid. Butanoic acid. But because we know it is four carbons, anoic acid because it must be a carboxylic acid for the esterification reaction. A question like this marked according to the marking guidelines. There is one mark allocated for correctly identifying the homologous series as the ketones. There are two marks for giving the correct IUPAC name of a functional isomer, that being pentanol. When naming a compound in question 2.2.1, the marks are allocated firstly for identifying the first, the correct functional group, so that being the anel and the other mark is allocated for the whole name being correct, so getting the number of carbons in that main chain correct. Question 2.2.1, when naming a long carbon chain like this, the first mark is allocated for correctly identifying the main chain, that being hexane. The next mark is for correctly identifying the, the branches, those being methyl and bromo. And the last mark is allocated for getting the name absolutely correct, meaning those numbers must be correct. Question 2.2.2. When drawing an organic compound, there is one mark allocated for correctly placing and showing the triple bond, the main functional group here, and then one mark for getting the rest of the chain with the branch correct. Question 2.2.2. 3.1, definition as given in the guideline document. Question 2.3.1 is one mark for esterification. And then, as I mentioned, condensation reaction was also accepted here. And the final mark, 2.3.3, one mark for butanoic acid.